All right, we're back. This is round three. Got Anthony on. Whoa, yikes. Uh, let me explain, right? So he's been on this deck. I like it. It's like maybe not best in an open format, but knowing the store's metagame, his Naya Zoo deck has been pretty good. He's done pretty well with it recently. He picked up his fourth Noble Hierarch. I think he has two Hollowed Fountains in his Naya Zoo deck now. And he's just got Retreat to Coral Helm. I don't know how many. I just remember him being excited. I think that makes him honestly what <laughs> worse against mid-range. Uh, Retreat to Coral Helm is pretty decent, but... Uh, it is not it is not going to be easy for him to land two cards together against a deck that has i believe assassins trophies in it and enough creature removal and discard to keep those cards away um anthony off to a good start though his noble gets bolted and he instead wild nakatl and grim lava mancer another bolt though oh my god who is anthony messaging what is hey, he telling him? Hey, watch the stream someone. I don't even know who he's speaking I don't even know if that's what he's doing. I kind of want to just see what he's typing, and I kind of want to tell him to stop, but I'm not going to do either. <laughs> but that Overgrown came into play tapped, right? It did come into play tapped. Oh, okay. Mitch keeping his life total pretty high. I'm not sure about the choice of uh, Bolting Lava Mancer over Wild Nakatl. Lava Mancer represents uh, a lot more flexibility, though, which I guess is scarier for him. Knight of the Re Reliquary, all right. I mean, that's step one. He's going to get it Abrupt Decade or Assassin's Trophy. They're both in Mitch's hand. So, like I said, it's not, not particularly strong. To Goyf? Oh, no. If he has a retreat, he doesn't have it. Okay, good. That's a, a little bit of a bet from Mitch, to be honest. Is it, though? Yeah. I mean... Because you basically... I don't know. He doesn't have a way to win off of Retreat to Coral Helm. Does he? I. Oh, no, wait. He should No, he should have the land that gives protection. So he'll get that and give the boy protection, untap it, and then swing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's in the deck though. I don't. I don't know that he can play that with four colors. But he maybe. can. He do, he well. He was. Okay. I guess he doesn't have to still be on it. But it would instantly win him the game if he had it. So Mitch, Mitch, Mitch kind of has to bet there. Uh, that yeah. He There's no reason not to just block. Yeah, you. I mean, in the situation Mitch is in, where he's missing land drops, and he has the removal for everything, anyways. Uh, you might as well commit your goif here because he's not going to put something in front uh, or, like, pump the wild Nakatl. It's not like that's what's killing your Tarmogoyf. It's just going to be a kill spell, if anything. What is this? What land is he grabbing? I'm going to get a uh, Kessig Wolf run and pump it so it <laughs> trades. That's... Yeah, he floated a green first. It's definitely not actually good, right? He floated a green first. I don't think it is. Because he spent his whole turn doing this. He gives it plus one, plus well, zero. Well, he spent his, his whole turn doing what? Making Wild Nakatl trade with Goyf. Yeah. Pumping his Knight of the Reliquary. And not spending any cards to do any of it. And, uh, well, and also not swinging with Knight. That's fine. His Knight is not that big. Uh, yeah. It's big enough to get through the Goyf. Uh, it was, but Mitch at 14, uh, one, two, three lands in the graveyard now. Oh, he gets about to put the fourth in, so he's going to put him on a pretty short clock. No, he won't. <laughs> Not with that. <laughs> Not like that, he doesn't. That's a pretty clutch land drop. Yeah. Mitch could have taken care of that card in other ways, but Liliana is... Far and away, much better. Tra 
That's wild. Mikado. Well, that ain't going to be too good. He's got a voice of resurgence, though, too. Yeah, he can start playing these out. He has two he colorless lands. Yeah, though, and it's so his own like fault. It's his own fault. He sacrificed a colored land to go get them. He they, That play was, albeit not horrible, very greedy. <laughs> yeah. There's a world where I think that was the right play, and it isn't this one. I hear someone shouting in the restaurant behind us. Honestly, good for them. I don't know. Wh I don't know why they're so excited, but good for them. His voice is kind of annoying. Yeah, it it's fairly annoying, especially with Keswick Wolfron giving it plus one plus zero and trample. Ev uh, uh, Potentially every turn. He has a seasoned pyromancer in hand that he can't cast. Yeah. Well, does he still have it after pitching one to Liliana? Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Threw that away. Yeah. So I don't know what he has left. Uh, Abrupt Decay, uh, Assassin's Trophy, and Bloodbraid Elf, I believe. Inquisition. Sure. Why Catches... Catches him slipping. Yeah, okay. Do you just, you just abrupt decay this now? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. He's behind one one elemental. Anthony's gonna be tapping out to make it <laughs> to make it hit for three. Yeah. I mean it's not Unless awful. Yeah. I mean yeah, in this situation. Yo, oh, he's gonna sack. I was about to say tap out to make it hit for four, oh, brother. Like now he hits her five. Yikes, Mitch, watch out. Oh sh, oh crap, he can't hear us. He has he has AirPods in. I think he kind of needs to find a land. <laughs> Bloodbraid Elf is the single best card for him here, and it's in his hand. It's just uncastable. They're they're. They're checking life totals real quick. One, two, three, four. Does Anthony think he has him killed or something? That can't be right. There's no way they can be off by seven. No, I know. Well... well. Anthony is another man. I I guess. <laughs> I love Anthony. There's no way I miss any life total changes. No, right? no, no. Do I you want to just go tell them what the life totals are? Uh, I don't think that's my place. I I think uh, we'll see. They might be fine. Did you just top deck a land? It looks like a land, but I can't tell. Is that a ghost quarter? He's playing a ghost quarter in his Jun deck. I mean, sure, whatever. It is. I guess he's got to pick between... Cassie Knight or Assassin's Trophy. I think the answer here is play Blood Red Elf. Yeah. At worst, it's a blocker that trades with something. Yeah. Man, Gruel Spellbreaker has Trample. That's kind of cursed, bro. Mm hmm. Wait. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why you do this. That does not seem right. The elemental hits for the exact same amount starting this th this turn. Oh, wait a second. Is he going to... No. Oh, no. There's no way that's right. I, I understand wanting to get rid of that, but... I don't know. I see, I see down there in chat, Mitch needs more run and six. Yeah, he does. What is that? Yikes. Oh my god. That's not okay. Well, what is he going to find? Uh, lightning bolt. That uh, doesn't help. Yeah, he does not cast Thoughtseize. Oh, well, I mean, he's not dead. If I were him, I don't know. If hits that are really strong. Kolagon's command, if he's still got it, running six. Bolt. Uh, more abrupt decays slash trophies. Go to one. All right. Well, yeah. yeah that was the only block. Yeah. 
I don't know what he just drew, but it looked kind of like a... Yeah, it looked like it wasn't useful. Brings in Huntmaster. I'm, uh, I'm about it. I'm watching him sideboard. Yeah, so, uh... <laughs> Yikes. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I'm Honestly, I'm just going to go over what's relevant here. On Mitch's side, Huntmaster, Anger, Damnation, that's it. Uh, there's yeah. an argument for Fulminator Mage. I'm not sure if Mitch is aware of how greedy Anthony's mana base is. Yeah. Um, Anthony, uh, yikes. Thrun. Thrun, maybe. Uh, Shalai. Sure, yeah. Um, don't think this is a Molten Rain matchup. What does Savage Alliance do? Uh, it, like, gives plus well, one plus one to your team. Sweeper. No, yeah. no, no, you're wrong. I swear you're wrong. No, it's a, it's a sweeper. Oh, you're right, you're right. We My brought bad. this up on another stream a while ago because he played it from his sideboard. Or, uh... Two to target creature, one to each creature, and creatures target player controls gain tra trample until end of turn. It's an interesting one. I'll say that much. I think that's not going to cut it. Uh, no. Yeah, let me deal one to your Tarmogoyfs. Um, yeah, this is... It. I don't know. He's just got an interesting pile of cards here. I think this this would be a, a great deck to be playing in 2014. <laughs> Anthony, yeah. His his deck is not by any means just bad. No. But the format is not kind to it right now. Uh, don't know about Ghost Quarter. Yeah. Renin Six is a powerful magic card. And uh playing Peatland or Cycling Lands alongside of it is very good. It turns like actual value into like actually just new cards every turn. For one mana. Very strong. I think Renin Six is probably one of the strongest cards to have come out of Modern Horizons. That and Hogak are like fighting for that spot, I think. Yep. Uh, one of them happens to be like a forty-dollar mythic, and the other one is a like five-dollar rare. But you know. Yeah. Modern Horizons was not good to the format. Yeah, it gave us a lot of new cards, but I don't think that meant it was good. I think it was not very healthy for the format. What is Anthony looking at? What is shaking, shaking his hand? I'm very sad I cannot keep this hand that has a Johnny Vengeance in it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you can put together any any pile of cards that has a Johnny Vengeance in it and not just name it Trade Binder. I, he, he played against me on Tuesday. And yikes, was a Johnny Vengeance good against <laughs> Astral Drift cycling deck? Yeah. Obviously. But what was actually the best card against me in his deck was Hushwing Griff. Because <laughs> I just couldn't do anything. I have three paths and one Fatal Push in my whole 75. What are we putting on the bottom? Won't show us. What is his hand? <laughs> uh, Yikes. Probably just take the Wild Nicotl. This hand is leaning really hard on not getting thought seized. Or drawing really well, I guess. Take Scavenging Muse, okay. It's the single, like, most powerful card. 
Yikes, we're gonna get to see a turn two girl spellbreaker, aren't we? Yeah. Hitting for four. That's spooky. Is it? A little bit. I mean, it's only spooky if he doesn't find a Tarmogoyf to just sit there and not I don't. Her. I don't like this playing Wild McCuddle here. <laughs> I would not have just played Wild McCuddle there. I would have played Noble. Yeah, I don't know how y you draw a 3-drop and then decide to not ramp into it turn 2 and instead just have a 3-3. Three three. Maybe he was like, uh, I'd rather get this pushed because this happens now and he gets to attack for 5. Sure. <laughs> Flip anger. <laughs> That's a little bit good. Yeah, card's good. Flipping into it is not, but, you know, we'll take those any day of the week. I'm assuming he's getting a forest here. Yeah, so we'll go down to 11. Attack first. Of course, the classic. That's how you know he's about to wrap his board is when he attacks with Dark he Confidant. He should block. Anthony? Yeah. I don't know if he actually cares. You leading on nobles while you're commentating and not playing. I mean, sure. This isn't even a modern deck, though, so I don't know that, like... I, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say it like that, but I, I do play mo the modern format as well. Anthony and I have comparable finishes at our local events. And I have mid ranges in the deck. No. I again, I wouldn't go as far as to say that. It's just not very positioned, uh, very well positioned in the overall greater modern meta game right now. In the in our local meta game, it's fine. I just feel like Gruel Spellbreaker getting in is more of where you want to be, uh, and you commit less to the board when you do that. Here he's had everything dealt with by one Anger of the Gods and one Liliana. And if he had led on Noble into Spellbreaker, Anger would have cleaned up just the Spellbreaker and Noble. And next turn, he would have played Noble and Wild Nakadal and not lost his whole board to the Liliana. Yeah, no, I, I'm agreeing with you when I say that he's playing against this store. I think he's well positioned here. Uh, he's racing against Jun because he's not going to outvalue the deck. Sure, but you could also. I, I feel like. I Well, I, yeah, I would make the argument that playing Spellbreaker on turn two is racing against Jun. Right. Knight of the Reliquary. Uh, pretty good top deck for him. Uh, it's going to be a 3-3 three, three right now, which is not very good. Uh, and it lines up pretty poorly against this Huntmaster. Um, Anthony has to top deck uh, actual creatures. Not as fast as the Nakata line, though. Um. It, they're comparable levels of speed. Um, again, I, I think that a part of it is just, I don't believe that you would be playing the mana dorks if you weren't ever intending to ramp with them. Either, either way, it's not like it's like a, a clearly defined line. The, the, this deck is pretty open-ended. He knows what's in it better than I do. Uh, just offering up that perhaps that line could have been better. I do. I think he's very good now that he has the second knight. Yeah, and Mitch has to find a couple of removal spells here. If Anthony has the, I I can never remember the name of it. The land that enters and gives protection. Yeah, I don't. I don't he can block with. Either. He can block with his knight. Uh, tap to get rid of. Uh, untapped forest or a tapped forest go give his knight protection and pump it at the same time to kill Huntmaster 
How big is Huntmaster on the back? Is, is it a 4-4? Four four? It's a 4-4. Four four. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so he'll be able to trade trade with it if he uh, doesn't have the protection land. If he does, he gets to just win combat against it. The problem is Raging Ravine is going to start being an issue here soon. Oh, Bloodbraid is very good. Sajiri Step, thank you. Yeah, that's it. Okay, well, Tarmogoyf on top of that is going to be really hard to get through. Yeah, he's in trouble now. Uh, for what it's worth, he does still... I like not attacking here, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I don't think Mitch has attacks. Um, and Huntmaster does have to flip back now, I believe. Because uh, he blood braided and then cast the card he blood braided into. That's two yeah. spells. Grab a fetch land. We're going to grow it again. Sure. Go to 12. I think we need to make sure he flips it over. Four color zoo deck. Day two to SCG Columbus today because hmm. zoo is fine in the format right now. Because how fast it can go as long as they don't go up against Hogak. The zoo deck still beat Hogak on camera. That's good to know. I, I think... I think overall, though, I personally wouldn't be on it right now. I, it's but I but mean no no but it like yeah, like yeah, I was yeah. saying the deck is still completely you viable. Can, you can point to I think it, I think results and stuff, but I think I think just using that as a way to say the deck is good is just wrong. E yeah, I think the deck is completely playable right now. It has good matchups clearly, uh, and since Hogak isn't as prominent at our store, it's definitely a good choice here. Uh, Anthony doing some math. Uh, I know we were joking about it a minute ago, but Retreat to Coral Home is in his deck. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how we haven't seen either Hollowed Fountain or Retreat yet. I'm not sure. Maybe he had. Maybe he didn't put them in tonight. He definitely told like was like, "Wow, I just picked him up. I'm really, I'm really excited." <laughs> I feel like we would have seen it by now. Me too. If it's not actually in there, I'll just change the title to Naya. Yeah. And then it's the zoo deck. Yeah, I'm pretty confident. Oh, he's only running one. Point. He's only running one. He's running one. All right, all right. What is he thinking about? What card could he have drawn that has him questioning his life this much? He's thinking hard. Yeah, his his boys are big. They're five fives right now. I mean, they can't get in. No, they still can't. And Mitch is poised to just end him. Yeah. Pretty sure an alpha strike does it here. Yeah, I can't see him running more than two, but um, he, n the way he was excited about it, uh, it sounded more like a one-up to me. Anthony taking his time on this decision. This is like, I don't want to, I don't want to act like like he's doing it intentionally, but it is border on slow play. Thrun. Yeah, wait, what decisions did he possibly have to make there if all he had in hand was a Thrun? Yeah, it sounds like it to me. It <laughs> seems like his decision was whether he was conceding or not. Okay, I I well like it, it's just there's not a lot going on there. Modern's meta is going to be interesting once Gak gets banned. I'm pretty positive that Anthony Troops got to deal with post Hogak Modern. No, uh, that is incorrect because Anthony has been on this deck for weeks. Yeah, he's been on this deck uh, for like just over a month now. Uh. I do. I have been offering Anthony advice and cards for this deck, though. I do like his deck. He wins here. He gets uh, to have double green back. Yeah, I don't think he has enough blockers to stop this. Let's see. So we block the biggest boys that the Raging Ravine and the. Th and the uh, Raging Ravine, 
Tarmogoyf and Scavenging Goose because it can get bigger. Mm-hmm. Oh no! Wait, Scavenging Goose cannot get big enough. Uh, it's uh, it's it'll still it'll still be bigger. Yeah, it'll it'll be bigger than some of the other creatures. So, so three, and then three, five, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine damage. Yeah, so that's not enough to kill him. Unless I missed some damage somewhere. Yeah, which is definitely possible. Because I am not the best at tracking life totals while commentating. We'll see what happens here, though. Uh, these knights will be able to just eat the Tarmogoyf, I, although... Yeah, no, well, I understand wanting to get that off the board, however... Yeah, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be better to block five, the Tarmogoyf with a knight so you 12? could eat it instead of having to regenerate? He can't regenerate. Or no, he can he if he gets he two lands. Yeah, he can. He's been following a list of a regional competitor that plays Zoo. Yeah, I remember him saying something about that. Again, I don't want to seem like we're like arguing with you about this, but uh, at the end of the day, Anthony is uh, Anthony is a little bit of an eccentric guy too. Uh, I don't think he played against the person who was on Zoo, but he has been t contacting him. I think. And asking him about his opinions on certain pieces. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's I think it's pretty pretty strong in some metas, but the like general whole GP meta that Anthony doesn't really participate. Yeah, in like would not the, be like good. the MTGO like meta is basically the same thing as the GP meta. I think if you brought this there, you would not be doing as well as here. Okay, so I I don't know about these blocks, so. How much is he letting through? One, he's he's two, prioritized the scavenging four. ooze over the Tarmogoyf. Uh because he could have he could have switched Thrun in the night around and uh killed the Tarmogoyf and kept the knight. Oh, I like that. He gets Ghost Quarter for Raging Ravine. Okay, so he's not gonna regenerate. No. Okay. Ghost Quarter for Raging Ravine is good, though, because it yeah. saves him three more life. Is he going to fetch again? No. So he lets through seven damage, goes to five. Yeah, I don't think this attack was good. His boys are six sixes? Yeah. Mitch is dead on the crackback? Yeah, I don't. I'm not really sure... It's hard to see all that coming, though. Well, right? okay, so like... Like, you can see that. Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry, Jarek, I didn't realize. So, six is getting through now. I mean, I guess the Raging Ravine going through was lethal, but, like, the the Ghost Quarter line was just on the 